Hey everybody, have you ever come across a car that's just a complete mystery and the more you look at it, the deeper the mystery becomes? Well, Christina and I came across this 49 Chevy. At first glance, when we saw this car, we thought, well, maybe the owner was parting it out before he passed away. Um, and I'll show you why. Let's take a look. It's up pretty high in the back on these homemade jack stands. It's a fastback, so it's uh, called a fleet line, 49 fleet line. Um, it's fairly complete inside, but someone's cut the floorboards out, and maybe this is just spare floorboard material, I don't know, but they've cut the floorboards out for some reason. But it is complete. Look at these fan controls. That's clearly not factory, but it's neat. So there's some kind of aftermarket heater in this thing. Amazing how many of these old Chevys that we find that have aftermarket heaters in them. Now you're about to see why we thought maybe this was being parted out. Obviously, sections of the nose are gone. So the inner fender wells here, but the fender itself is missing the whole nose, grill, bumper are missing. This fender is missing, but this pan is here. That's a pretty valuable pan because it's not rusty. There's graffiti on the side. Watch out here. I don't know what this says, but it's interesting graffiti, if nothing else. So you can see here that this trim has been removed. It's a very solid car. It was a beautiful red. Here it's been removed. You see the fleet line rear window. It's in really good shape too. We thought, well, you know, somebody was stripping it. It's in here in an enclosed space. But then we started to walk this property that it's on and we found the hood the front fenders, the front bumper, and the grill's probably out here too. So then we thought, maybe this thing was getting restored. So we decided, maybe we better take a closer look at that engine. And guess what we found? This is not the original color. The engine is a little bit tilted. So it looks to me like it's chained on it it looks to me like someone was putting this engine in were they taking it out that's possible too but i think they might have been putting it in and they never finished because it's it's not quite right but the starters on it um the carburetors on it i don't know if it's seized um, but maybe we can get it running Sorry for the wind, it's pretty windy out here and it's actually really cold for Tennessee. It's got cool stuff like this glass uh, gas filter here, uh, custom shut off for the gas, not sure why that's here, but it's neat, it's stuck. Uh, but we're going to see if this thing is seized. Yeah, what do you, oh, this belt's super loose, so this might be hard to do. But what do you think the chances are? I don't know. <laughs> Alright, let's see. This belt is too too loose. Yeah, it's too loose to try, but I'll put a wrench on it. This is interesting on these old Chevys. This weird thing here, that's actually for a crank, to start the engine with a crank. Um, I wish I had a crank. That would be much, interest, much, much easier to see if I'll get this thing unseized, but we've got ways. <laughs> All right, it's, unfortunately, it's stuck in gear. That's problem number one, because we can't see if it's seized, if it's in gear. There. Okay, that's fixed, and the clutch actually feels like it works. Is 
is on film. Mm -hmm. So I know I'm using this chain wrench backwards, but it's the only way I can get it in here and get a grip. <laughs> Obviously it's eased. <laughs> Okay, so first order of business is uh, to put some mystery oil in the cylinders. All right, let's see if we got any oil in this thing. We do. Yeah, and it's full. It's full, and I don't see any evidence of water at all. Okay, let's get the oil. Let's see what this looks like. What do you get? What do you bet? <laughs> On this, I have no idea. Huh, that's a very odd plug. The uh, electrode is almost flush with the end of the plug. But it looks okay. There's no rust on it. It's good carbon on it, but this is an old AC. Look at that, AC 45. I don't think I've ever seen one. Usually there are 45 or something like this. That means this is not a resistor plug. This might be the oldest AC plug I've ever seen. The reason this is so unique without the R before the 45 is that <clears throat> it is not a resistor plug. <coughs> resistor plugs came out because the older type of plugs were interfering with radios. They would make static on the radio. Um, this predates that. So this plug is from a time when radios weren't very common. Squirt can works good. Real good. So, um... One of the things that Richard and I found interesting about this car was, um, I guess you could say some of the clues to the mystery. So this is um, a window sticker from December 1975. And can you see that? I'm gonna go in a little closer. California Highway Patrol. So we do know in 1975, this car was in California. Now, another interesting sticker. Well, that's the first time I've seen those, but I'm gonna to have to look at those when we get home. But another interesting sticker we found was on the back bumper. So I hope you can see that. It says faculty staff parking, parking, excuse me, Belmont College, Nashville. Now, interesting fact about Belmont College was that it, in 1991, I believe, they changed over to Belmont University. So, I don't know if you can tell that one, but that also says Belmont College, Nashville. But we know in 1991, prior to 1991, and they when Belmont became a university, someone was actually driving this car um, to work. So, a little more clues, uh, a few more clues to our mystery and then we got, okay I can see this let me see so that's a University of Tennessee sticker um, so I'm probably going to uh, get inside here and move some items around and I don't know see if I can find any more clues wish me luck so I took this second plug out and it was really hard to get out. I don't know, it might have been cross-threaded, but it was really hard to get out. And I look down inside and I see rust. So I've got this scope. We're gonna put the scope in there and see what we've got. 
Christina got this for me for my birthday. That's the top of the piston. Yeah, that's very, very bad. That's not so bad. But right here, see that rust? I want to say that's the bottom of the valve. That valve will never seal like that. Yeah, that's the bottom of the valve. See that? Oh man, this valve is open. So it must be on the exhaust stroke. So I think that's what it is, yeah. And that is really rusty. Okay. Okay guys, so um, inside and I am uh, just starting to move some things around to see what is in here. And um, you can see the dash, it's, uh, the buttons are pretty rough, but it's pretty common on, on older cars. Uh, I don't see the ashtray, that's missing. It goes right there, the lighter underneath. Um, glove box, I'm not sure what we have here. Glove box. Couple of old batteries. Let's see. Pencil. Popsicle sticks. Uh, old screwdriver. Old rusty spring. Oh my goodness. Um, there's the. I guess that would be the heater. But one thing I found interesting. Do you see what is? Ah, I can't get that down has been attached to the visor. It is a vanity mirror. And, uh, well, I can't get it open right now, but that tells me that um, I would guess a man was driving this and uh, had installed that, that mirror right there so that um, his special lady could uh, check her hair and makeup. Um, so you see that top of the dash here. And uh, let's see, there is a lot in the floor, actually. Oh my gosh, so I think there's some glass back here. It doesn't go to this, I don't see a window that goes to. So there's some glass to a car back here. I'm not sure where that goes. Um, there's some other parts to a car. I did find these great Chevy hubcaps, which are just like the ones I collect for my hubcap wall, so I will probably be uh, snatching those uh, and asking how much I need to pay for those. A lot of hubcaps in the back of the car, in the trunk um, seat, obviously, that did not go to this car. Door panel missing on that side. Um, so, hey, I'm gonna take some of this stuff out so we can get a better look at this car and see, um, see what else we might find that, that might give us a clue what we're dealing with. Yeah, see the rust here on this one? This is number three. Not good, not good. Okay, so I moved some things around and actually found the door panel um, in the back. Um, <laughs> can see it's just a lot of junk there are several pieces of um, flat metal like that and that makes me think that they were probably going to use that to put on the front floorboard uh, found this great mat right here that Richard could use when he's underneath the car um, and then you can see the back right here a lot of different hubcaps or some air filters back there um, can see there's some some speakers back here some Sony tiny little speakers I don't know if those are from this car or not uh, floor, um, yeah right here see what it is that's really solid this is a very solid car if this was in uh, California for a long period that's probably why so let's take a look in the trunk and see what we're gonna find Okay, so it would take me a while to get all of this out of here. I did move some things around. There are 
an insane amount of uh, oh, seven up bottles, Coke bottles, Dr. Pepper bottles. Um, I don't know, I can't leave that upside down. Um, so those are kind of interesting. And then just, like I said, a lot of different hubcaps. They don't seem to um, be of the same color, just a variety of hubcaps back here. Um, but you can see, look at the, the back of, of this. Great shape. Bumper still looks, I mean, other than a little bit of rust on that, that and right there, the bumper still looks really great. Okay, so I actually um, lined up some of the bottles here for you to see. I think these are just fantastic. I love old things like this. Um, and then really funny, there's a, and this is, this is glass right here, but this is a, and it looks like there's a set of flip-flops. Hey, if you have a beach house or a pool house, those would be perfect. So I don't know if those bottles are worth anything. You guys are going to have to let me know. couple of these plugs are so tight crazy tight I mean they just must be rusted solid in there okay these two of these plugs just won't come out and unfortunately a broken one it's not broken off but this the porcelain is cracked so I'm gonna take the valve cover off this the problem is this side plate is in the way. <clears throat> I can't get the socket around the plug and the plugs are super tight. So I'm gonna take this off next. That was nice, that came off nice. That one too. Sometimes these are a real bear. And sometimes they're so tight they back the bolt off that goes into the rocker shaft. These didn't. That's a nice bonus. It's pretty good. These all seem pretty stuck to me. That one's not. But yeah, a lot of these are stuck. I'm gonna loosen up this rocker shaft next. That'll free up some pressure from keeping the engine stick moving. I heard Richard saying, uh oh. So what's going on? I found water. No. Some water right here. Hold on. Not a lot, but there's water in here. Um, we'll have to look under the valve cover. Let's let's grab that valve cover to see if it's rusty in there. It's not rusty at all. And some somebody cleaned it. So somebody had it off and cleaned it. So I don't know if that water is something to be worried about or not, but it's never a good thing. So I've loosened up the rocker shaft. That'll take the pressure off of the valves that might have been keeping the engine from turning. 
We'll find out momentarily because I'm going to see if I can spin the crank again. Wouldn't it be nice if it was just the valves? Try spin it the other way. Taking some frustration now? No. See, the <laughs> shock and awe worked. Oh. It didn't. <laughs> it didn't. This guy is stuck. So, what do you think now? Was it coming out or going in? Might have been coming out. Might have been coming out. So, I'm going to give the plugs another try, put the mystery oil in, and let it sit. It is a very, very cold day today, and I had to come back to the car to um, to blow my nose because, well, it was it's starting to drip, and it's nice and warm in here, and I don't want to go back, but I'm not going to leave my partner stranded in the cold, so I'm heading back. Success. I got him out. Man, it wasn't easy. That's what number six looks like. Oh, wow. Yeah, super rusty super rusty um number four is full of oil look at that full full of oil what does that mean it means likely that the rings in this one are bad likely which should be another indication this engine was coming out not going in filling up the last one Putting a full squirt can in each cylinder. And that's, uh, that should be plenty. I'm gonna have to let this sit because this engine's really stuck. All right, so I noticed this gap here between the manifold and the head. That's never gonna fly. It's not gonna run like that. And I realized the reason is Whoever was pulling the engine used one of these manifold bolts to hold the chain. So that wasn't too bright. That's that's got to come out right now because it'll never run like that. So it's Cree oil time. This stuff is an amazing penetrant. So I'm just going to soak it, let it sit a couple of minutes, and see if I can get this bolt out. These bolts are notorious for snapping because they go through heat and cooling cycles constantly and it's cast iron into steel. So we'll let this sit for a minute and see if I can get this bolt out. All right, we're gonna show you where we found the nose to the car, but look at this. The building it was in has collapsed. Look at that tree built, grew right through the building. Oh, wow. That's yeah, how we long were here. We were here. here a week ago today and this was not like this it probably collapsed in that windstorm we had oh yeah that's true yeah. guys we had a horrible horrible it took two of our trees down at home yeah. but so there don't get too close to that thing so that's one part correct yeah that's the the front fender there's the hood the other fender uh, the, oh right there's the hood right there yeah Oh gosh, oh, and there's the other fender. Oh no, Richard. Yeah. Oh. And we know this is the right one because it's the right color. Uh, good man. You know, 
we were talking that even if we can't get the the car to run someone somewhere probably needs a lot of parts off of that body and we just hate to see it get crushed um and that is where the chevy we're currently working on and uh quite a few other cars out here are headed we're gonna we're gonna take you for a little tour of this property oh hun look at you so look at yeah the I graffiti was, continues yeah i noticed that d-i-v oh devil no yeah that says devil oh my goodness <laughs> yeah so, um, please be careful. We're going to take you on a, a little tour of this property because I got to be honest with you. I could personally spend a week out here because I love things like this. I would investigate and look at everything and yeah. I said it, I personally could spend a week out here going through all of this junk because I love this stuff. Richard. Oh, look at him. Such an amazing man. You got it. Amazingly stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's scary. That's for sure. But think about it. This falls a few more inches, this stuff would be junk. Yeah. Real steel. Watch your step. All right, back up a little bit, watch out. I'm gonna turn I'm the gonna camera off first. Out. So, um, guys, we were looking around here and uh, there is a tree, can you see that tree? So that tree has fallen in the back of that old truck. And uh, I personally walked straight through there um, last week. There was nothing whatsoever in my way. And the wind has blown all of that stuff in that pathway. Blown over this refrigerator. And it took the, the metal, the tin off of this roof. And we'll go around this way. I walked straight through there last week as well. Um, you can see it's it's blown that down. Yeah, so there was definitely a lot of damage done out here. Richard, what are you going back in there for? Oh my gosh, hun. Please do. He's making a nervous wreck right now. I don't think this is coming out. Good job. He went back to try to look for the grill. He's making me nervous. <laughs> yeah, enough of that. I'm still alive. That's a minor miracle. So I have to get some footage of this. This is an old um, RC Cola machine. And I saw this last week and it made me think of Sleeper Dude, right? because of their RC Colas. Let me tell you, this soda machine was inside of that, I guess, makeshift garage. And I don't know how it was blown from that all the way to here. Oh, and it's not light. And that is just, I don't, that, wow, that's crazy. Pretty sweet. I know, isn't it? Yeah. I know. Sleeper Dude and his family are um they're building a, a new a new garage and I was like, that would be so cool in their garage. It would. 
It would. I can't even imagine. It's almost like there was a tornado out here. Yeah. Okay, guys, so um, I asked Richard to walk around this way because I wanted to show you this part because I was intrigued by this area. Um, you can see the roof has caved in from the storm. Um, but babe, take them inside. Huh? Take them inside. Yeah. So this was dug out of the ground. Obviously, you can see the ground level over there. It's about three, three, four feet deep to make a garage out of it. And it's backed up by an ancient trailer. Yeah. And it's coming down right on top of that sedan delivery, that Ford sedan delivery, mm. which has been converted into a trailer. But this is way too dangerous to go in now. Yeah, Richard and I used to call this the original man cave. Yeah, yeah, but, but it's, it's had it now. Yeah, and you can see, I walked straight through that pathway last week, and um, it, was it was okay. It was clear, yeah. Not now. All right. And then that, we, we thought maybe that might have been the original house, maybe, or barn. Yeah, it must have been some kind of barn. Yep. Okay, back to it. Well, I'm going to try a crank in the crank slot. <sighs> yeah, it doesn't work any better than the chain wrench. No, but it looks like it's easier. Um, yeah, slightly, slightly. Yeah, it does work. <laughs> I'm getting plenty of leverage, but this thing won't move. Yeah. Uh, let me get over this side. Okay, I'll switch you. Yeah, no go. Mm. No go. But let's try this bolt. Now that it's been soaking in Creole. Came right out, right out. So my fears were not realized. It did not snap. So once we take this out, we should be able to get this chain out of the way. Okay. Let's take a look at it. Look at that. It's completely saturated. The Cree oil got right inside. Did exactly what it's supposed to do. Okay, so Richard wants to try one more thing before we uh, call it quits. He wants to put a battery in it and see if it will um, unseize the engine. I don't think it's gonna work. All right, now I know I'm not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to hit the starter to try to spin the engine when it sees, but the valve train's loose, so there's less chance of damage. And frankly, this probably isn't gonna do anything. Um, who knows if the starter's even any good. But my thinking was, if I could get the starter working at the same time that I'm on the crank, it's a little extra boost. But let's see if the starter even works first. I've disconnected all electrical systems from the car except the starter because I don't know what's 6 volts and what's not in this thing. Well, the starter is working, but it's not engaging the crank. 
Huh, wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, this opened up a new can of worms, <laughs> didn't it? This is very strange. Don't uh, tell me what I think I'm going to find. Don't tell me. Why isn't this engaging? So what did you think you were going to find? I thought maybe there was no uh, flywheel. Ah. Oh. This is engaging. Get the Cree oil. So the solenoid's kicking in, but it's not going far enough to engage the flywheel. That's interesting. I've never seen one kick in but not move far enough. So we'll see if the Cree oil can help us with that. Huh. Start is in good shape. Really good shape, but it's not it's not hitting the flywheel. That's really strange because the solenoid is definitely engaging. Definitely. Did your button come off? There you go. Let's try that again. Ah. Weird. What happened? Yeah. There's something up with this starter. Um, the starter is solenoid's moving, the Bendix is moving as far as it can and it's not hitting the flywheel, which tells me this might not even be the right starter for this setup. So button it back up, uh, putting the valve cover on, putting the plugs in, but I got to thinking, if that starter doesn't engage the flywheel, that's probably the first thing we should have checked because nothing we do, even if we got it on seas, is gonna start this thing without that. <laughs> oh well, live and learn. All right, so between the engine being seized and the starter might not even be the right starter because it's not engaging the flywheel. I think we've had enough of this one today. I buttoned it back up. It's got moisture oil in the cylinders. The plugs are back in, so no moisture will get in there. Maybe we'll revisit it at a future date, assuming it's still here. But for now, um, I think we've taken this one as far as we should. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. This is a fascinating car. Uh, obviously has a lot of history to it so who knows what the future will bring it we appreciate you clicking subscribe and also uh, my brother's starting a channel it would be super cool if you go visit his channel and subscribe to that one too it's called florida rustic repairs you'll see someone that looks like me so if you could check that out i'd appreciate it but thank you all very much for watching have a good day